So what is it that causes people to fall into such a disease and to fall into this darkness? And how do we protect ourselves and our homes from it? Obviously, in the next 12 or 13 or 14 minutes, I can't give everyone those tips. But it starts off with something. It starts off with a recognition that what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to us of prescriptions is good for us, no matter what. And we are not ashamed of those things. We're not embarrassed of those things. We're not ashamed of those things. What Allah has given us is for our own good. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Adam alayhi salam and Hawa, Adam and Eve, wala taqraba hadhihi shajra, do not go near that tree. Allah Azza wa Jal knows that that tree is not good for them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to save them from temptation. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, rather than saying, وَلَا تَزْنُوا Do not commit adultery. He says, وَلَا تَقْرَبُوا zina." Don't come anywhere near adultery. And so yes, rules and restrictions are placed upon us that are not typically observed in the workplace, not typically observed in our interactions today. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us by forbidding for us khalwa, to be secluded with someone who is not mahram, someone who is, not, uh, someone who is, is amongst those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded to observe hijab. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited us from being alone in seclusion with someone of the opposite gender. Counseling doesn't justify it. Online doesn't mean anything. There are no ways to get around it. Allah prohibited it for us. Allah prohibited khalwa for us. Prohibited that we be alone because no two people are alone of the opposite gender except that shaitan is the third. It's what the Prophet ﷺ said. We're not ashamed of that. It would be a protection for us. And we happily take that as a prescription from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect ourselves. Even if we will be mocked for it.